So body parts that need iodine are thought men, men have prostates that that needs iodine. Uh, the reason why adolescent women, uh, pubertal girls have issues would be without enough iodine be, is because those, the, the building of sexual characteristics is really directed by thyroid hormone. So puberty is driven by thyroid hormone. It is regulated by thyroid hormone. If you don't have enough iodine, you're going to have problems with puberty. So that's the only difference. Uh, so more tissue, breasts, uterus, these are two big, those are tissues that require, they have space, right? So mm -hmm. prostate is a lot smaller. That's really the only reason why people with those tissues and people without those tissues would require um, more iodine during puberty. However, stress can also make you need more iodine. So iodine is gone if there's a lot of stress. Mm -hmm. Like any nutrient, chronic stress, yes, or just being, having, you know, substances that are pollutants, that's stressful too. So with the iodine, wiggles iodine drops, put them in water, Put them in water, put, put them in gel caps, those vegetable gelatin caps. Okay. No, iodine salt is terrible. It Once you open it, it all the iodine evaporates, and it's also a, hard, it's a cheap uh, form, sodium iodide. It's not a good form. There's actually been literature that there's been more Hashimoto since they instituted uh, iodine salt. It depends. If they have Hashimoto's, how inflamed is their thyroid? So it, if you can have iodine and it can kind of wake up the thyroid because what if you have nodules? You have extra pieces on your thyroid. You have like your thyroid grew another leg. That part is going to respond to the iodine. That part, if it has follicular tissue, might make hormones. The whole point is that we have to calm all that down. It doesn't mean the thyroid doesn't mean need iodine. It means that the thyroid is bigger and it might produce more, which might make a person feel hyperthyroid temporarily until we can calm all that down and make that extra tissue go away. The ranges yeah. are too wide. That's easy to say. The range is looking for uh, cancer and coma. They're looking for you being dead. They're not looking for you functioning functioning well. I think that people should be, I mean, the, what, the bottom of the range is what, 2.3. I think you should be at least at 3.4. Free T4 Before. should be mid-range. Yeah. So um, TSH is kind of irrelevant because half of the body's tissues don't even talk to TSH. So you've got deiodinases, which are selenocysteines, which actually are receptors that are regulating how much thyroid hormone that tissue wants, right? So deiodinase one is liver and kidney tissue. And that one uses TSH to send signals to the thyroid. But the rest of the tissues, the central nervous system, imagine that, uh, so the brain and the, the musculoskeletal tissue is deiodinase 2. That does not send any message to the, to the thyroid. That does not use TSH to send a message to the thyroid. If there is a substance that it's using as a messenger, nobody's looked for it. So basing everything on TSH is very irresponsible. There are plenty of papers that have indicated that TSH is unreliable. You can have a person who's incredibly hypothyroid, has low free T3 and low free T4, but has in range TSH. Now, in some places, they only test TSH. They test pregnant women, only test TSH. And we know that low thyroid function causes learning disabilities.